Hi, thank you for joining the webinar. Today, I will talk about the why of product management. Basically, it's about how you can leverage product management to grow your product. Before we start, I'd like to give a quick intro of myself. I'm Joseph. I wear Dye Canva, Beauty Plus, and You Can Make Up in Product Roles. I got my master's degree in computer science from Tsinghua University in Taiwan. I've always been a product. Uh, I've always been a product person throughout my career. I would like to split today's presentation into three parts: how to use funnel analysis to product strategy, must knows when conducting A/B testing, how important it is to understand users and competitors. So, um. If you do not understand your users and in product conversions, and you do not have product management to help prioritize the tasks, it's very likely that you end up building all the features, which complicates your user experience. Of course, that may also be a bit too risk, a bit too realistic, because if you cannot break even, your product may have lost lots of money. And the company will start investing in your portfolio or team. So,、um, just to conclude, why product management? You want product management to help you achieve business goals with the most prioritized sections or resources in a given time. Product managers are the strategists for your company to succeed or grow. So let's dive into the first part: how to use funnel analysis to do product strategy. First thing first: how do you analyze users in a more scientific way? To succeed in this, I highly recommend you do a thorough funnel analysis. Whatever your product is, we can generally break it down into you know、um, first. First-time experience, where you know users try to understand what value your product is offering. Secondly, how do users engage with your product or features? Whether they can find the features, is it easy to understand these features?、Um, are they satisfied with the effects the features bring to them? Thirdly, do users convert into subscribers and active users? How much do you earn from subscriptions and advertising? Do they return? Do they retain? I'd like to give you an example here by using a subscription funnel. Let's assume your product is a you know、um, subscription based product with free trials. Here we define several user states: new or return users. Trailing users, subscribers, retain subscribers, and turning users. So you can define the conversions of each, like trial rate, trial to pay rate, subscriber renewal rate. You can check each conversion by new or existing users, market or country to identify potential issues and make assumptions.、Um, to be more confident in the assumptions, you can do user research to prioritize the problems to handle. For example,、um, to increase the trial rate, your current issue may be, you know,、um, because of a lag of discoverability of your entry point, meaning your VIP entry is not apparent to end users. So you can make it more prominent. It may also be because, you know,、um, Your copies are not attractive enough, so you may want to improve them for discounts, free trial, etc. To include, sorry, to increase the trial to pay rate, you may want to remind users of the privileges they earn during the free trials. To increase the subscription, the subscription renewal rate, we may want to consider offering more discounts for higher LTV. Plans to retain more first-time subscribers. So,、um, as you know, and you can see here,、um, you can brainstorm product strategies based on each conversion's number in the funnel. Just one thing I'd like to emphasize is you must ensure the data is accurate. 
Otherwise, you're basically strategizing based based on something not so solid. So please confirm with your data team. Well, I just presented a concept for funnel analysis, an example of like a subscription funnel. Now, I like to give you a big picture of how to strategize. This is the framework I designed myself. Um, you need to strategize because you have limited resources. So,、um, step one, you need to define the key metrics. Somebody may call it no star metric. For example, your product may define the subscription trial rate as your key metric. Step two, you need to find key actions. For example, you know,、uh, for the trial rate, the key action is to initiate the free trials. Step three, you need to define the key funnels and their conversions. For example, to initiate the free trials, there are two conversions: entry point to a subscription page and a click through rate of the、um, subscription button. Later on, firstly, you will need to con. You will need to conduct qualitative and quantitative data analysis, such as user analysis and data and business analysis.、Um, let's talk about user analysis first. It involves user research in the form of interviews, testing, and questionnaires. You can also, you know, analyze your app app store reviews, or utilize the reports from third party platforms. Or ask the third-party companies to help you conduct the user analysis.、Um, then you know. Let's talk about data and business analysis. It involves like funnel analysis, user profile analysis, business analysis, competitor analysis, and market analysis. I personally、um, very much love to use Statista, but it really depends on your company's pain point. And budget. Secondly,、um, you have to identify problems and make assumptions, and prioritize the problems you have to tackle.、Um, lastly, you will need to devise potential solutions. Usually, we need to design MVP, like minimum viable product, to verify assumptions. Then invest more resources into phase two and future phases. Um, given no assumption is validated yet, we、we'll、need to run experiments. As for how to run experiments, I will cover it later. So、um, I like to combine, you know, the company goals with funnel analysis to help you understand better and more about how to do product strategies. Let's assume you are working on a、um, subscription-based product. Still, here we have two company goals: MAL and ARR. Firstly, for MAL, we can break it down into、um, acquire new users and boost activeness, which is relevant to retention, because you know monthly new and existing users compose MAL. Obviously, so for new users,、um, you can have at least two directions: organic and non-organic user acquisition channels. For existing users,、um, you can improve, you know,、um, localization and core product user experience design stuff like that. Secondly,、um, for、uh, ARR,、um, the team goal is to increase subscribers. We can actually just break it down into break it down into trial rate, trial to pay rate, and subscription retention rate or renewal rate, whatever you call it.、Um, These directions all have their relevant product strategies.、Um, so let's just use monetization strategy as an example here, as we discussed already before.、Um, you may actually have three product directions. In the、uh, strategy doc, subscription growth, pay feature implementation, and pricing strategy. Define the success metrics for them, and the product strategy for each. For example, for subscription growth, 
you may want to improve your um, subscription dialogue discoverability so uh, more of your users will be likely to convert into subscribers. You may also want to improve your um, copies or text. For pay features, you may consider driving you may consider diving into user analysis more before you invest in lots of resources. If you're a photo editing app, you may consider implement, implementing unique features such as pimple removers and wrinkle firm features for subscribers. Last but not least, you know, for pricing, you may consider localizing the pricing um, and payment methods for optimization. Now let's talk about A-B testing. First thing is, why do you need to run A-B testing? So um, you want to run A-B testing because you want to grow your product. Direct feature rollouts are risky, especially for revenue changes. And nobody is 100% certain about the success of assumptions. So we got to run experiments without a doubt. So when running A-B testing, I would like to summarize some key points. First, user segmentation is always important for getting the most valuable information. You must remember, new and existing users have very different user behavior. Also, um, users um, in different markets and iOS for Android, they are very different. Secondly, you must compare data. Um, you must compare data apple to apple. There is no use in comparing data from different data platforms unless they are having exactly the same data definitions and ways of implementation. But usually, um, they wouldn't be so much like comparable because, for example, data from um, Google Play Console and data from Apple, you know, Connect, they might have different, you know, definitions for retention rates. In this case, I wouldn't be comparing these two numbers and I will make sure that like my audiences understand um, which uh, numbers from which platform I'm using for sure. Last but not least, um, you must ensure that there are no unexpected factors like um, experiment experiment overlapping. If there is such a case, you have to be very aware. So um, last but not least, let's talk about how important it is to understand users and competitors. So um, when you're analyzing users and competitors, what do you learn? So basically you can understand like uh, who the users are and where do they go very often. Like users' roles, their concerns, motivation when they are trying to purchase a product. Also like the challenges they're facing when using your product or when they're trying to you know uh, purchase um, the subscription plan, stuff like that. Also, um, the size of the company they are working at, is it like big size or a small size or medium sized? You can try to understand your, uh, like your user persona. Which industry do your users come from? Like, are they more like from fashion industries? Are they more like coming from uh, tech industries, stuff like that? And why do they come to your product? What are the pain points you fix for them? What are some issues um, you help them solve or resolve? And what are your selling points? Why are they staying or retaining and use your product? So um, usually um, you want to understand users and competitors by asking you know, several, different, several different questions in the interview. So on um, this page is basically some idea about like how you can do that. So I like to separate them into two directions. 
the business level and in product conversion level. Um, for the business level, um, you may ask about, um, you know, product strength and the product research, stuff like that. Um, so for market strengths, it's more like uh, you try to understand um, the gap, the distance between you and your competitors in different markets. For example, Dropbox and Google Drive, um, their product features might seem quite similar, but the way they are marketed in different markets might create the chances for each other. For example, Google Drive might be able to steal some users from Dropbox by using some marketing you know, initiatives, some marketing strategies, and vice versa. But how to identify the opportunity? We should do some you know, research. We should try to understand your users and different markets. So um, let's try to talk about this too. So um, for the business level, um, you may ask about uh, the market strength and product research. As I said, for example, um, you may ask why users are or are not paying for your product, and why they do, and why are they doing so for your competitor X Y Z. This is like a very important, you know, question to ask about because in my past experiences, I use these two single questions to identify a lot of issues, like. You should do not understand uh, like the wording on the entry point in iOS or you know Android, and because um, the product I was in charge of um, is offering free trials, um, they thought they don't have to pay because of the wording. So when they tap on the subscription dialog and see a lot of like. Um, you know, notifications about paying, they got mad about it. So that's the reason why, um, like, the click-through rate of that in English-speaking countries is so low. And uh, I didn't recognize that, like, until I really did the user research with the users. Uh, and just by changing the copy of that to make users aware of, you know, um, the the subscription plans, the conversions increase a lot, a lot more than before. So such a thing is like um, I would say a low hanging fruit. But the first thing is you have to identify them before you actually implement them. Um, so you may also conduct you know something like uh, business health track research for comprehensive analysis. So what is like a business health track research? It's actually um, a very giant project in which you try to understand um, user perception of your own product and also um, of your competitors. And uh, in the given markets you like to dive into. Why are you doing that is because um, you want to understand whether there's a chance for use acquisition. We all know that like for use acquisition, we have organic and inorganic weights, especially, especially for inorganic use acquisition channel. We want to make sure that like we are adopting performance marketing, uh, you know, methodology very thoroughly. Um, so uh, if you do this business health track, at least it can help you figure out the markets you might not win over, right? So, and also you might want to understand the trigger and barriers of the users when they're trying to use your, use your product. You, may, you might get a lot of insights um, from that report or analysis. So um, basically, um, this is some sharing I can give for uh, the business level analysis. Um, also for product research, I think you can ask about what are users' favorite existing features and what innovation are they expecting. So why are you asking that question is because um, normally we might be relying on our own brand too much. Um, but you have to make sure that like everything you deliver, everything you're asking your engineers to build or implement um, this 
things should be directly relevant to what users want. You have to fix their pain points. So people always ask, what do we have to build for a product? A, B, C. Usually make sure that you ask with your users. You ask your users of what they want in your product so you know your directions. And uh, for the end product conversion level research, um, I think there's several questions you can ask about it. Let's take the subscription growth as an example. You may want to understand why users are incentivized by your um, subscription screen or like your um, subscription plans, stuff like that. So you might hear a lot of thoughts, a lot of reasons why they do not want to pay, a lot of reasons why they want to pay, stuff like that. For the like the insights about uh, they want to pay, you can use this for your targeted dialogue to convert more users. For the reasons why users do not want to pay for it, um, just try to gain some product initiatives and improve your subscription products better. And uh, why are users into certain subscription plans? So you try to understand end user psychologist psychological status and try to leverage that into your um, paywall design and convert more users. I think that's something you can gain from this question. And what are the potential initiatives? Um, as I mentioned, um, if you do understand um, like how each user engages um, in the product conversion, in, a pro in, a co in each conversion of a funnel, um, I think um, you'll try to verify your assumptions better and try to prioritize better and thus build a much better product. And last two questions are very um, critical as well. Like, how do users engage with first-time experiences? What does that mean? What is first-time experiences? I think I explained it in the beginning. So um, if a new user can be satisfied with your product, it's more likely that this user will retain and become loyal and even convert into a subscriber. So um, if you understand whether users are satisfied with your first time experiences, you can basically try to devise several uh, strategies such as you know, um, onboarding experiences, locked out experiences, and uh, how to define the default effects of your features in app or on your website, stuff like that. And uh, how do users engage with your end product features? So um, when they become loyal or activated or active in your products, usually how do they engage with your features, stuff like that? So um, you can leverage a lot of knowledge or insights from this, like for not just in product, but also from you know your EDM email direct marketing strategies or push notification strategies or even you can just leverage this insights onto your um, US acquisition strategies stuff like that so um, to conclude um, you want to analyze your users and competitors because you want to make sure that like uh, your product has a selling point or unique selling point, you are really solving your users' pain points and you are investing in resources in the right direction. And you are really improving your product's performances like quantitatively. So um, I believe for any company, users and competitors analysis can always you know, be super helpful to product strategies. So um, before the end of this session, um, let's summarize what you have learned. So first, funnel analysis is the key to product strategy. Two, A-B testing helps you grow your product, for sure. Three, Users and competitors analysis matter to your product analysis. And also strategy, of course. 
So um, here is my LinkedIn. Um, feel free to search for Joseph Chan and add me as a friend if needed. So um, that's all about my presentation today. Um, thank you. I hope you learned something from this session.